three. Thank you so much for joining us. And with that, over to you. Thank you, Kavya. Thank you, ETNOW and BFSI for having us today. Alternative investment funds, also known as AIFs, is set to become one of the mainstream investments. With over 10 trillion capital commitments, it is one of the fastest growing asset size. To dwell more on what AIFs is all about, we have an expert with us. So Amit, we hear all about AIFs, uh, private markets, uh, startups. Can you throw some light what alternative investments is all about? And India, if you see, has always been inclined towards traditional mode of investing. Even if we were talking about technology since morning, I've been going through sessions. It was about savings, lending, uh, investing in mutual fund. This seems to be set aside, and we now see the new generation inclined towards investing in alternate. There has been a change in landscape. Can you throw some light what has led to the change in interest and, and what new investors can see in this? Uh, thank you for this. I think uh, alternative investments have really become mainstream. So if you see at the data, I think alternative investments will be approximately 11 lakh crore as we speak today, uh, while mutual funds are close to 55 lakh crore. So it's already a 20% of the mutual fund industry size. And uh, believe me or not, I think it is the most traditional family offices, high net worth individuals and sophisticated investors who are coming into the alternative investment space. It's not because the thresholds are high, you have to have a minimum one crore investment size and the capital is all locked up. So the interest is predominantly from a lot of family offices, institutions, high net worth, and it is in market which is gaining ground. Two or three key reasons why this uh, market is gaining ground is that there is a need for diversification in the portfolio of the investors. I think they are all driving a lot of comfort from the suit of products that get delivered by some of these alternative investment managers. And most of these products are very differentiated and they provide very different risk return matrix to the clients, which is very differentiated from the equity markets. Some of these asset classes were not even available to investors five years back. So I think a need for diversification, ability to see newer products with differentiated risk returns, and also a slew of asset managers like Edelweiss Alternatives and others who have built a track record of delivering returns is all together driving a sort of growth for the market uh, at this point of time. Thanks, Amit. Thanks, Amit, for this. Uh, taking a cue from what you just said is one, diversification. Uh, second is risk and return. Uh, we also spoke about lending that you exactly uh, uh, hinged to. So you lead the private credit practices at Edelweiss Alternatives. Uh, I was going through a report and I could see that uh, Prekin has predicted uh, private credit to be one of the hottest selling asset class on the Wall Street today. And approximately $2.7 trillion industry by the time you reach 227. And in India, approximately we have cracked around 5.7 billion uh, private credit deals. What is this private credit all about and this risk return advantage to investors? We also hear people using a lot of fancy terms like uh, venture debt, performing credit, impact financing, special situations. If you can throw some light on these uh, multi-segments of the private credits that you have and also the risk return to the investors about it. Uh, I always get afraid when lending becomes hot. I think equity remaining hot is fine. I think lending has to be done with a very calm head on your shoulders. I don't think lending uh, needs to go into a frenzy because you have you are not having the upside like an equity market, but there is a downside risk in lending. So what I think private credit means, it's basically very simple. It's all the credit that comes from the non-banking channel. So any credit which is given by uh, AIF, or of in a form of a non-convertible dementia or otherwise is private credit, simply put. What is the difference between the two is that the private credit offers bespoke financing solutions. So you have flexible capital to address your growth needs, your stake enhancement needs, or your needs around how to build businesses at, in a differentiated manner. So some of this financing can also be structured in terms of coupons, 
it could be back ended payments it could be equity upside linked structures which are not prevalent for normal banking finance globally after the gfc and in india after uh, last 5 7 years we have seen the regulations grow where banks are doing predominantly very vanilla working capital lending and lending which is uh, very simple and very uh, what i should say going in a straight jacket fashion while private credit can provide as i said bespoke financing solutions so some of the few nice names that you talked about venture debt performing credit special situation are all basically at some level lending now in venture debt the lending could be to companies which are in the venture capital region so they have received venture capital funding but they don't want to dilute more at this point of time so they may raise debt for their immediate cash needs and will be willing to provide a coupon and a equity upside to the venture debt client so that's one segment and that market allows them to raise financing if there is let's say a funding winter or they are expecting a down round but they believe that that can happen so that's one category performing credit is a category where you lend to companies who are doing let's say a private equity buyout or a stake enhancement where again you could have some equity linked upside in those structures but that has happening more in the traditional companies which is let's say the manufacturing companies or the uh, let's say uh, infrastructure assets so it is a lot more differentiated than the venture debt there's another category special situation finance uh, where you are fund funding companies which are coming out or turning around the corner so there are this is all risk return spectrum so you could have private credit at 12 14% you could have it at 14 to 16% or you could have 18% plus depending on what's the structure and the upside there thanks amit uh, we have a lot of bfsi sector community with us uh, can you help us understand whether private credit can help support this community or a startup community and how is the yield different from a bank lending transaction so i think the the private credit is what bank lending is not i don't this is a this are literally mutually exclusive uh, areas and i think uh, the assistance which the industry can expect is to if they want to grow faster than the hindu growth rate or if they are basically wanting to compound or set up new ambitious projects where they want to put in equity and are looking to raise debt private credit can come and help that in startup case because there are hardly any asset and many of those startups might be loss making or might need some runway in terms of cash burn also they may not fit into the normal banking channel which is where a venture debt fund could come in and help them so they have both the options of raising a uh, equity or they have the option of raising venture debt so that's how the startups can get helped the manufacturing companies can get help because let's say a company wants to utilize its current internal accruals for its growth prospects and wants a more back ended structured in terms of repayment they could get the same from a private credit fund or if somebody is acquiring a company let's say he is buying out a new company or doing a m&a then also he can use some of this flexible capital for his use thanks amit uh, how do you see while we spoke about uh, 11 lakh crore is the amount that you uh, uh, quoted do you see it is invest it is the increase in investor base or you see the the same bunch of investor it's a very concentrated investor community increasing the size or allocation towards uh investments across alternative investment space and also if you can highlight uh, what are the risk return that somebody should be and and what are the factors that some, somebody should be looking into when they are investing into private credit because you see people talking about hey i'm going to give you a fixed deal i go to a bank you will be getting abc yield and when you come to private credit it will be a much accelerated return but people fail to understand is a yield a higher yield is always higher risk it, it comes with its own package if you can throw some light on what an investor should be looking into a private credit and what are the factors somebody should consider when they are considering a private credit product oh that's a long question <laughs> i'll i'll just break it into two parts one is uh, what is the investor base and how is it expanding and second is what risks should investor be aware of when he is investing into the uh, private markets i think the investor base is steadily growing and in fact we have not even seen the advent of insurance or pension companies coming into this like our pension fund does not invest into alternatives though some of our pension funds are the third largest in the world 
and globally we see all the pension funds from all over the globe coming and investing in alternatives uh, into India, whether they are Canadian pensions or US pensions, and we have raised a lot of capital from those pension funds. But Indian pensions are slowly warming up to the alternatives idea, and they are currently now focused on invits and REITs, which are also a form of sort of alternate uh, investments. So the investor base is huge and it is growing. The family offices are getting sophisticated, so they are looking at newer products and are becoming more agile to the opportunity set that is in front of them. And individual investors are also, who have our high net worth and are discerning, are looking at some of these products through wealth managers. So I think the industry is growing at a pace and that is why you have seen almost a 2 lakh crore addition. Like we were 4.5 lakh crores in March 21. It was six and a half the next year, eight and a half the next year, and this year it is 11 and a half lakh crores. It's almost a 35% growth over the last three years. So the investor base is expanding, and the, the, as the investors get more comfortable with the delivered track record. See, as I always say in asset management, it's the, uh, the trust in the asset manager, the transparency on uh, data, and the track record of the asset manager. So all of that, as it gets built, the investors will become more and more comfortable and therefore the industry size will keep growing. As far as the risks are concerned, I think clearly uh, investors are giving away liquidity. So I think that is one very big thing which investors have to keep in mind. These are illiquid products, a lot of them are illiquid in nature and you can't redeem uh, those products like a mutual fund at, at T plus 2. So you are giving away liquidity, but you are getting higher yields in respect of that uh, liquidity. So that is one risk which they should be very clearly aware of. Second, I think they should very clearly evaluate what is the pedigree and the track record of the asset manager. What has he promised and what has he delivered in the past? That allows you a lot more comfort on what you are investing in and investing with. And the last but not the least is investors should be aware that these are multi-year strategies where funds could be three years, five years, and seven years. And a large part of their return also comes in terms of the back ending uh, in the third year, fourth, and the fifth year. It's not, they will get regular cash flows, but the final outcome will be known three to five year uh, hence. So I think those are the key things which investors should be aware while investing in these strategies. And Samit, we are running short of time, but one last question, uh, Amit. Uh, somebody in the morning, uh, one government official was speaking about when you give one crore, it is your problem, and when you're giving 100 crore, it is a bank's problem. What gives you sleepless nights? No, I think uh, it's not about that. I think we have been investing. I think, in fact, uh, we have uh, we've successfully exited almost a 1.3 billion fund uh, over the uh, last five years by investing and harvesting more than $2 billion from that fund. So it's not always the case that 100 crores is your problem. I think it is how you have invested, how well you have created the security structure and how you have monitored the asset over a period of time. I think uh, it is all about asset management capabilities and that's why I keep harping upon expertise and track record is very important. That's, that's very insightful. Thank you so much, Amit, uh, for the insight on alternative investment fund. Just to summarize the discussion, uh, Amit, he's a private credit and that's the reason we have been harping about to use his expertise for alternative modes of also using as a lending transaction in lieu of the traditional modes of investments that usually the BFSI sector community uses. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Thank you.